how to access emails as a G Suite admin. If you're an admin for Google Workspace and you wanna see other people's emails, there's a few ways you can do it. And I have to preface this by saying, hashtag I'm not a lawyer, and I don't know if you should be going into anyone's emails. You probably should have that in your employment agreement. And number two, I think just to be a good human, you should probably have a reason to go into somebody else's emails. But if you wanna go into someone else's emails, here's how you do it. I'm gonna show you the way that they can consent to, and then I'm gonna show you the way that maybe they don't consent to. So to do anything as an admin in Google Workspace, of course you wanna to go to your admin panel. So you go along to admin.google.com and you sign in. Now, you don't necessarily have to be what's called a super administrator for this. You just need to be an administrator that can do something in the admin panel. And there's different roles. So that something might be the ability to set up users. That something might be the ability to manage groups. The most basic one that we're gonna start with actually doesn't involve the admin panel, but you probably wanna get an idea of what users are here for your business, right? So I can see all these different, I can see all these different users. Okay, cool. Now, the simplest way to look into someone else's mailbox is using consent. And there's a tool that's built into Workspace called Delegated Mailbox. Now, not many people know about this. This is one of the best kept secrets of Google Workspace somehow, but it's really useful to be able to see into someone else's mailbox. Let me show you what it looks like. So when I open my mailbox here, you can see here when I click on my picture, I've got a number of different accounts and images that show up on the right hand side here. And these are basically all the different accounts that I'm either signed into or that I can sign into. There's a few here that I was signed into previously and for whatever reason, I'm now no longer signed into them. Ha, huh, but look at this, what's this down the bottom? There are a number of other mailboxes and these all say delegated next to them. Now, these mailboxes are mailboxes that somebody else has shared access to me. It means that they've expressly gone into their settings, they've consented, and they've shared access to me. And what can I do with a delegated mailbox? Well, I can log into that mailbox without knowing the password to that mailbox, which is a very cool feature. It doesn't give me access to that person's Google Drive or their calendar or anything else. It just gives me access to their emails. And if I go and click on one of those mailboxes, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the archive is probably the safest one. You'll see it just automatically signs in, in a new tab, right, in a new tab, but it automatically signs in. And then here we go, I've got access to all of the emails that are in this account. Now, the archive account here is the account that we happen to use as a bit of a dumping ground for all of the employees who have left our company. We migrate all of their email into this one archive account. It means that we don't have to pay for Google's archive licenses, and it means that we keep a copy of all of their data rather than it being deleted. If you wanna learn more about that process, just search for the word offboarding on our channel. I've got a million videos on offboarding and how that process works and how to do it. But we're into a delegated account. You can see the icon's a little bit different. It's got a key on the icon there. Uh, I can't go into this person's apps or calendar or anything else. It just lets me access it. So what's the archive account feature really useful for? Well, if you've got a PA or an EA, you know, an assistant of some sort who you want to manage your account, you can give them delegate access to your account. They can log into your account and they can effectively act as you. They can send emails on your behalf. Now you've got a little button and I'll show you the button in a second where you can choose if they send an email and it looks like it was sent by them or if it just straight up looks like it was sent by you. And that's a pretty cool feature because if you want someone to literally pretend to be you, this is the way you do it. The other thing that it's really useful for is let's say maybe you wanna share a mailbox and most people when they share a mailbox, what they do is they hand the password out to like three different people. Maybe uh, the most common example is like someone's got a, a reception area in a business, maybe you're, you know a doctor's office or uh, what, what do you call it? A clinic, I guess, but three different part-timers are managing that front office. And so three different people need to access his email address. Now, instead of sharing that password with three people, which is not really great for security and two-factor authentication is a bit of a pain. And so people end up leaving that off, not ideal. And then someone leaves the business, but they still have access to the account from home. It's a mess. What you could do is set up one delegated mailbox in the middle 
and then share that delegated mailbox out to three different individual user accounts. Then you have an audit trail, you know who's accessed was, who has accessed what, and makes it really easy for you to access that as a shared mailbox in a secure way. The third reason you might wanna do a delegated mailbox is if you are going on holiday or someone else is going on holiday and as a temporary measure, someone wants to be able to check somebody else's emails. It means that you don't have to, again, share passwords, which is not a good idea. And if you give a password, it means you give access to the whole account your mail, your drive, absolutely everything, your chats. That's the kind of thing you don't really wanna share. But if you want someone to just check your emails, delegated mail is the best way to do it. So how do we set it up? Well, first you've gotta set it up on the target of who's gonna be sharing their emails. So the target is the mailbox that's gonna be shared. So if you've got like sales at yourcompany.com and you wanna share that with a bunch of people, you're gonna first sign into sales at yourcompany.com. Now I'm gonna sign into my account here and I'm gonna, we're gonna use our imagination. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pretend because I think everyone here will be able to imagine what we're doing for the sake of the demo. I go into my account settings in Gmail from the target account or the account to be shared. I click on accounts and I go to grant access to my account. So if I click add another account here, I can go ahead and share that account to someone else on my team. So it's gonna ask me to just log in again there, triple check that it's really me. Thank you, Google, for looking after my security. And I'm gonna put in the email address of the person, right? Okay, cool. So a confirmation has been sent to the person. And once that person accepts the invitation, they're gonna show up here as an accepted account. Now, here's one that I prepared earlier. If I go to my actual inbox uh, and I go to my settings here, under accounts, you can see here, there's multiple people in my company that have accepted my invitation to see my emails. Now, what does it look like to actually set the settings of these accounts? You would have noticed here, there's two options. One is mark red. Do I wanna make a conversation red when someone opens it or do I wanna leave it as unread? If my PA is read it, then it marks it as red. That's useful for me. I don't know if that's useful for you or not, but that's how, that's how I like to do things. Next, show the address and the person who sent it. Sent by or show the address only. So that's the little sneaky feature that I mentioned earlier, which allows you to say who sent the email. Now, I like my PA sending emails on my behalf. That makes my life easy. But every now and again, if they make a spelling mistake, I don't want that to look like I've made a spelling mistake to the person who's receiving my email, right? So I like that setting there, saying that it was sent by someone else, because it says, okay, someone else is helping manage Pete's mailbox. And even if it has Pete's signature on it, you know, the essence of the email is coming from Pete, but the blame lies on someone else if they get a spelling mistake wrong. I'll leave that one up to you, how you decide to do that, right? But anyway, that's how you set it up. So this is a very long-winded way of getting to what this person was actually asking about, because they're kind of asking like, how do I look into someone's email? And there's a few really clever things that we can do in the admin panel. and. I know I'm kind of teasing you with the answer here, but I wanna show you all the ways that you can access different people's mailboxes because there's a lot of really cool things that you can do here. Before we get into my final answer, and yes, I'm gonna tease you just a little bit longer, back in the admin panel, we can go to our reporting section here. And honestly, this reporting section has gotten really, really, really powerful over the years. Not only does it give me things like how many people are using what apps and what their activity like and all that kind of thing, I can go into this audit and investigation section and I can pull up all kinds of information about what's happening in my workspace account. Check this out here. We have a Gmail messages log. And so inside my investigation tool, I can start to run searches for messages that are flowing in my business. Now you can see here the message that was just sent to Mary as an invitation to manage my mailbox. Look at this, I'll see if I can open the individual message here. I'm not sure if it shows the message. Yeah, it appears it does, there we go. Okay, so that's got the headers and then the business message. Now I've got to justify a reason to view it because I want to, <laughs> here we go. And look at that, it's shown me the whole message. Okay, wonderful. That covers how you can run reports and you can see messages here from the admin panel. Now, granted, I'm a super administrator, which means I can do absolutely anything in the account. If you can't see this, even though you can see the dashboard, you'll wanna check the administrator roles and see what permissions you've been granted as an administrator, because there are different roles with different levels of access. Now, the final and the third one, and this is really like the magic feature, Google Vault. Now, if you haven't heard of Google Vault, Google Vault is technically an e-discovery service rather than 
a backup service. People think it's a backup service, but the technical definition is an e-discovery service. The purpose of Google Vault is to save a copy of everything in your business, and it effectively makes a carbon copy of any file, email, chat message, even I think it may do Gemini prompts these days as well. And it saves them, especially in the vault. That carbon copy can't be deleted or touched by anyone. And once it's in the vault, it stays there unless you choose to release it or you've set the settings to have things release automatically after a certain period of time. Now, what's Google Vault useful for? Well, if you ever have a legal issue, a dispute with a customer, a dispute with an employee, this is the place where you're gonna to go to and run a search on all of the emails and all of the happenings inside your business to be able to review that data and potentially export that data. If you're subpoenaed and you need to hand over evidence, this is where you'll go. Hopefully that never happens to you, but the feature's there if you need to. What's more likely is you're gonna be doing some kind of internal investigation. You're gonna to need to get access to historical files or maybe historical email messages or chat messages that someone sent to someone inside your business that they've now left the company and you don't know where the information is. Well, it's there in Google Vault. Now, you don't get this for free. You've gotta pay for the Google Workspace Business Premium License, which gets you access to Vault. You get it for all your users then once you upgrade to Premium. And that's a recommendation if you're in a legal, accounting, consulting, financial services, uh, medical, allied health, anything like that, you really wanna have this switched on because it means that your butt is saved if anything ever goes really bad. So that's my recommendation. Let's now have a look at what we can do with it. We go along to vault.google.com and here we can open up first our retention settings. So Google Vault has been configured here to retain information. You can see here it's retaining pretty much everything indefinitely, but not calendar events. So let's go ahead and switch that on. And mail, I think was only kept for one year. Let's set that retained indefinitely. That's usually the easiest thing to do. Wonderful. Okay, so once we've set up our retention rules, unfortunately, obviously it's not gonna pick up anything else in the past that you haven't already retained, but it will go through and take a snapshot of your current data. So it's gonna retain everything it's got access to now, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so we've done that. Next is to look at matters and reports. Now you can see here that you can set holds and you can start doing your audits with matters. And then reports is basically like uh, how you can run reports across the whole thing once you've configured matters. Now, this is getting a little bit into like the legalese of why you would use this tool. Effectively, if you're not retaining absolutely everything and you have an event happen, what usually happens is the lawyers say, oh my God, you've got to retain all the information regarding this particular event. That's where you would set up a matter and you would say, retain all my emails from a particular person or a particular date range and don't let them disappear from retention, even if they would otherwise expire with the retention rules. If you've got everything set to indefinite, you don't really need to bother about setting retention rules here. Matters is where we run a search for everything. We create a matter. I'll create a test matter. And I can start running my search. Okay, so I'm gonna search for emails. And let's say, for example, I wanna search for anything, including peter at itgenius.com, which is to this domain, which is a test domain, this, this is an external email address. And I'm gonna say uh, across all accounts in the company, all data, and let's go ahead and search. It's even gonna pick up drafts as well, which is pretty interesting. Okie dokie, there we go, look at that. Lots of different emails referencing Peter Moriarty just in the last day. Now, this is a kind of super search that lets you search right across every email in the whole business. Now, I did show you that you can do that in the admin panel as well, but this one allows you to do it for Google Drive, you can do it for Google Chat, and you can see everything. This is the point where I say, make sure you've checked with your lawyer about whether or not you should be looking at employee information, especially if they're not aware of you snooping around in there. But this is a pretty darn excellent tool, and I've gotta say, it's bulletproof if you ever have one of those oh shit moments and you need to get into things.